What's good everybody? I hope everyone's having a fantastic day. In this video, I'm gonna have a very serious conversation with you about frugal living, my thoughts on it, and everything else. As you know, if you've been watching this channel for a while, I've made several, several frugal living videos, mainly in the year of 2020, um, some in 2021, but I kind of stopped and shied away from making those videos. And actually, um, Camille Colazzo was a coach of mine in, in 2020. She coached me and helped me build and grow my YouTube channel to the next level because I plateaued at a certain level. And she said, well, hey, have you ever made frugal living videos? I was like, I never thought about that, right? And so I made a bunch of frugal living videos. They got a ton of traction. And now that I'm in a completely different financial situation than I was when I made those frugal living videos, I just wanna give a quick update on my thoughts about it and why I'm still frugal even with a high income. So I'll start off by saying some people hear the word like frugal and they automatically think, oh, this person's cheap. This person doesn't have money like that. They have to be frugal. And rightfully so in some ways, because a lot of the content around frugal living perpetuates the idea that you shouldn't spend, you should cut expenses, you should even clip coupons in some cases. I'm not really on the side of all of that, but I think everyone has like a different idea of frugal living, which is why I made a whole playlist on why I changed the definition of what frugal living means. Basically addressing frugal living as I see it to my audience because frugal living should not be seen the way that it is currently seen in my humble opinion and here's why there's certain videos around the topic of frugal living and saving money and living a minimalistic lifestyle which i'm all for right but the videos that i'm specifically talking about are videos such as things i no longer buy and then with parentheses frugal living and i actually made one of those videos and at the time of me making those videos, I 100% meant everything that I said. But the thing about personal finances and the whole niche of personal finance is simply that as you grow as a person, you evolve and your personal finances evolve as well. And ever since I made this YouTube channel, I have always made good money, but I straight up took my finances to a completely different level and I just would not be able to sit here with a straight face and honestly tell you that I'm the same person I was when I made that video and I make the same financial decisions that I made when I was making that video. Because the thing about me is if I want something, I'm 100% going to get it. If it's full price, it's full price. I'm not really going to wait until like Black Friday or a certain sale comes now. If it is Black Friday and if there is something that I want, obviously it's the smart thing to do to get it on sale. Like that's just common sense. I, I literally went to Bath and Body Works the other day and got like six candles for the price of three. That was dope. I like that. And they only have that sale for like twice a year. Check out the candles behind me. Anyway, as your financial situation changes, you're not going to be as tight with certain financial decisions. Like if you want to go out to eat and you have the money to do so, and it's not going to impact your finances and it actually saves you time and you don't have to worry about cooking, it's not going to hurt you to make that decision. I even made one video where I was like, I don't buy a bottle of water. I'm like, bruh. <laughs> I'm, I promise you it's not that deep. And you know, for me back then, I thought that like everything was a waste of money. And since then, my, my mindset has really changed around frugal living, but here's what I will say about frugal living. I am minimalistic about what I buy, but I don't refrain from buying things that I want. Instead, my approach to frugal living doesn't really care about what your financial status is, like whether you make a ton of money or whether you make a little bit of money to you, it's all subjective, right? I'm not gonna outline everything that I think is a lot of money and what is a little bit of money. It's just to say that if you feel like you're making a good amount of money versus if you feel like you're not, frugal living should be constant across the board when it comes to that stuff. And my current approach as I've stepped into from making like a medium income to a high income, I've just gotten to a point where I'm like, okay, well, I'm gonna prioritize what's important first and absolutely most of my money is going to go toward that. So that's either money to fulfill my necessities, you know, like rent, utilities, stuff like that, food, 
And then the rest of the money is going to go toward things that put more money into my pocket. That's my overall mindset. And for me, I have a maximum and a minimum for everything. So for a minimum, I'm going to put a thousand dollars that I make every month into stuff that's going to put more money into my pocket. Whether that's putting money into stocks, my YouTube channel for more growth, maybe it's better quality equipment, maybe it's hiring an editor, things like that. Marketing my book, buying software to make it easier to write a book, which I recently did. Things like that put more money into my pocket. And so that's my minimum, either $1,000 and my maximum would be $1,750. I already have those numbers in my brain. So I know how much money I have left over that I can just spend freely. And it's a good amount. And sometimes I don't get through it all. As a matter of fact, most of the time I don't get through it all. But that's because I'm just the type of person that doesn't really want a lot of things. I already have a lot of things that I want. And I'm not a hard person to please. So like I have furniture. I have a nice place. I have a car that gets me from point A to B. It's not the fanciest car in the world, but it gets the job done and it looks pretty nice. So as long as I can fulfill those things and have a certain level of comfort when I'm at home and I'm just chilling, I can watch what I want to watch on TV. The rare times I do watch TV, um, I have books I can read for both information and for leisure, things like that. These are things that I will 100% spend my money on. But as it is, I don't really have a lot of overhead and I never put myself in a position to have a lot of overhead because my entire goal, and it's been my goal for my entire adult life, is to constantly increase my income while keeping my bills basically the same. I'm not looking for a new car right now. I could get a Mercedes AMG right now if I wanted to, but it's gonna cost me per month when I already have a car that's perfectly fine that has already been paid in cash. You know what I mean? So I'm just really at a point in my life where I'm content with what I have. I don't go crazy on a lot of things like as far as clothes and wardrobe stuff. I really don't go crazy with that stuff. I, I like to wear simplistic things. Um, I like to look good and I like my clothes to fit me a certain way, but I don't go overboard and I don't spend thousands of dollars on clothes. And I just don't go down rabbit holes where I find myself spending so much money on things that I don't need. And, and the reason for that is because I know my money could be more appropriately put somewhere else. Like if y'all understood, and some of y'all do, but if every single person understood how valuable it was to put your money into stocks, good stocks, good companies, right? That actually pay you money over the course of years. That's how you get rich slow. But for me, I don't care if I get rich slow. You, I'm still going to be rich, so it doesn't matter. And when you consistently put money into something that's going to keep your money growing, that's a very intelligent thing to do. And so, yeah, I'm going to I'm going to automatically at the beginning of every month set off a thousand dollars to the side minimum to put toward my goals and dreams, to put toward putting more money into my pocket in the future. To me, that's more worth it than going to the mall every month and spending $1,000 on myself. Because a lot of people that are in a similar financial situation as myself, they may deem it necessary. Like, hey, I earned this. I worked hard for this. You, you go on ahead. More power to you. But what I'm telling you in this video is that is not frugal. If you go to the mall and spend $1,000 on yourself every single month, you can get a lot of really nice things. You can really accumulate a bunch of outfits, a bunch of shoes jackets, suits, whatever your jam is, purses, makeup, video games, whatever your thing is, you could stack up a lot of those things just off of a thousand dollars a month. It ends up being $12,000 a year minimum. Cause like I said, my maximum is 1750, but I'm frugal in that. I'm going to prioritize everything that is a need. I'm going to prioritize everything that's going to go toward my future because that really is a need. My future self being rich, my future family having a great financial situation is a need. It's just not a need right now, but I'm prioritizing the future right now. I'm not prioritizing feeling good and looking rich right now. I could care less about that crap. That is just me though. And I can honestly say that I would be the same exact way if I made double, triple, or quadruple what I was making now. But that's because I'm so heavily focused on building wealth and I'm using frugal living as a vehicle to get there. So I am minimalistic with my money. I don't go out of my way to spend money on things that I don't need unless I really want them. But I make sure I have the money 
where I need it to go first. I make sure I fill up my savings account with a certain amount of money every month. I make sure that I invest a certain amount of money every month, whether it's in my business, in my website, on my YouTube channel, in my book marketing, whatever the case is. Stocks, whatever. I make sure my money gets invested a certain amount every single month. And I make sure that I'm getting a return every single month. And I make sure that I'm studying about the things that I'm putting my money into. And once the needs are taken care of, once the investments are taken care of, whatever else is left, go crazy with if you want to. But even then, if I have more money left over, it's probably just going to go into my savings so I can continue accumulating. It might go into more education for what I'm building right now so I can continue to accumulate more because you can never learn too much. You can always keep learning. You can always improve upon what you're doing. So if you're making decisions based on your future and you just want to grow and you want to see your finances hit the millions, I highly recommend that you just listen to what I'm saying in this video because I'm doing the same thing. I'm building myself up. I'm building my finances. I'm thinking about my future family. I'm thinking about investments. I'm thinking about passive income. I'm thinking about making money every single month, every single day in my sleep because I have gotten myself to a point where whether I'm working or I'm not working, I make money every single day around the clock without fail. And there's absolutely nothing I could do about it. That's a beautiful thing to be able to say, am I rich yet? Absolutely not. But I'm doing well and I'm working my way up to becoming rich and then eventually wealthy and then build generational wealth. And that's the whole point of me being frugal. I think that we should be a lot more content with what we have in life and that we shouldn't worry about being flashy or caring about what other people think when it comes to possessions, when it comes to cars, when it comes to clothes, when it comes to, I don't know, accessories like shades, chains, things like that. There's nothing wrong with having them. But when we get to this obsession around what other people think about us purely so we can look good and look successful, look, looking rich, that's great. But I'd rather be rich and not look like it. I'd rather have that peace of mind knowing that I have six figures in my bank account than having six figures worth of clothes on and not having anything in my bank account. To me, that's just irresponsible. And I'm not saying that you have to be frugal to be financially responsible, but I say a frugal living is basically taking saving money up a notch and being hyper attentive to where your money goes and why it goes there, knowing exactly why it's going there and knowing what the result is going to be and not giving a crap what anybody around you thinks about it. Because it doesn't bother me one bit that I'm still driving the car that I got when I was 20 years old and I'm 27 now. It doesn't bother me one bit. It still does the same thing. I don't have to worry about paying for that car every single month. It's paid off already. It's been paid off for seven years. That's one less burden I have to worry about. So with the money that I would be spending every month on that, that can go into investments. To me, that's frugal living. It's minimizing any big expenses that could set you back months or even years and taking that money in excess and putting it into something, whether it's your savings account, a high yield savings account, or an investment account that then propels your future forward so you don't have to worry about things. I say it in a few videos, but I'm going to say it again. We're not born to worry about our financial situations. We just end up in positions where we do. But what if we didn't have to do that? I'm here to tell you we don't have to do that. And I'm not saying frugal living is the end all be all because frugal living sounds really good, right? But what if you're not in a financial situation where frugal living even makes sense? I'm going to break that down for you. Frugal living doesn't make sense when your only option is to be frugal. That's what I mean by that. Frugal living makes sense to people who are making pretty good money or making great money, right? Like frugal living is for people who are not lit. Like if you're living paycheck to paycheck, you're like, dude, I already have to be frugal. What do you mean? I'm doing what I'm supposed to. You get what I'm saying? So I'm not saying that frugal living is the one and only way to get to where you need to be. Because sometimes in order to be frugal and to build wealth in the way that I'm saying, sometimes you have to increase your income in some way or even multiple ways. Sometimes you have to put in stupid amounts of hours to get the finances that you need to provide for yourself and your family. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. I'm gonna say, don't do it long-term. Get on your feet, get to where you need to be and continue to build and get into a place where you're permanently making a certain amount without working the 80, 70 hours a week. 
But sometimes you have to do that and there's no shame in that at all. But in my mind, frugal living is being extremely financially responsible, understanding how grateful you should be for the possession that you already have, not worrying about getting all these crazy expensive things every month just because you can. But what if a recession hits? What if COVID 2.0 hits and then we're in a similar situation than that we were in in 2020 and now you're sitting there like, I don't know what to do. What if you're in an industry that has to shut down, you know, when other industries are still running, but yours shuts down, they're like, oh, crap. Now what do I do? It's like, be smart with your money now. Be grateful for your money now. And don't wait until you get into a catastrophic situation and be like, oh, man, I had something good. Well, you could have maintained it if you just saved, if you just looked at what your priorities were every month. There's nothing stopping us from doing that. And there's no class in school, or at least not most schools, that teach us about these things. But as adults, we have to become more responsible with our money. And this is why I'm frugal on a high income. It's not just for someone who's making a low income or not making enough money and they just want to save a little bit more and they want to pay off a little bit of debt. Like, no, 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 no. We can go bigger than that. We can be frugal to build our investment accounts. We can go frugal to build our businesses. We can be frugal to make six figures a year doing something that we were once doing part time, making, you know, 10 grand a month, 11 grand, 20 grand, 25 grand, 30 grand a month by investing our money into other things. That is the reason that I'm frugal. But the reason that I used to be frugal back in the day was to build an emergency fund, you know, build my savings account. And once those things got dialed in, I didn't really know what the heck I was doing. But now I'm very dialed in and I know exactly what I'm doing. And I know exactly where my money's going and why it's going there and what the result is going to be at the end of the day. And that is an amazing place to be in. Not everybody is in a situation where they can be frugal at a high income. I just wanted to give you this video to show you that, hey, if you do make money, hey, if you're making decent money and you have some extra at the end of every month, maybe try doing this instead of what you're already doing because you can be in a much better situation in the future, even two to five years from now, just by following this simple advice. And the stuff that I'm talking about in this video is actually why I made the video, why you should live below your means even if you have money. Because I wanted to make this thing abundantly clear. This channel is not just for people who are trying to save money. This, this channel is for people who have money, who want more ideas of what to do with it, who want to grow their money, who want to be wealthy in the future. That is what this channel is for. So just keep that in mind. And if you like this video, check out my video on why you should live below your means even if you have money. It'll be even more of an eye opener once you watch this and you watch that and you will get a ton of value from it, I promise you. But anyway, that is the video for today. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Reggie Bryant and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth so you can control you, control your finances and control your life. Thank you so much for watching this video. I'll see you in the next one.